Hello everyone and now welcome welcome to a match between 15 Sway and Lin. This game taking place here on Terranus Stand. On the top left hand side of the map we have 15 Sway spawn or sorry Lin spawning as the blue orc. Over here on the bottom right we have 15 Sway spawning as the red human. One important thing to note, Lin did choose random in this matchup. So we'll see what type of strategies will be coming forth from 15 Sway in this matchup. Um, Mountain King, a very popular hero on Terranist stand. Uh, but at the same time, if you don't know what your opponent's race is going to be, I could see you going for Archmage. Any other hero choice would be, um, well, quite a shocker to me if we saw Paladin or and or or, or Blood Mage first. No and possible for a first hero. Thank you, Gnome, for the follow. Ready to work. Altar of Storms, Burrow, Barracks getting constructed. Pretty standard build coming in from here. We're looking to see a Farseer coming in from Lin as his hero of choice. A Farseer harassment going up against a Mountain King in this matchup here. Mountain King useful. Um, perhaps he's expecting a lot of harassment. And the Mountain King has become a much more popular hero with the Blood Mage second and the Paladin third. Blood Mage very effective at shutting down uh, enemy heroes while the, the Paladin able to keep the Mountain King alive and well. Mountain King with that Thunderclap in that front line able to deal so much damage and also negate so much damage as we look at the footmen now making their way back off to the north. Orc Burrow is being placed down. Second Orc Burrow being placed down here. I still don't see a Voodoo Lounge as of yet. So it's not going to be a very fast tech to tier 2. Um, interesting that we've been seeing much more of this second Orc Burrow play to try and, and to try and train up some additional units before going into tier two. Mountain King gonna go ahead and get a storm bolt off on that rogue wizard right there. Are we gonna see any lightning shields? No, we are not. There is a forest troll shadow priest getting picked up and well lack of frost armor making this creep camp much much more easier to clear as a wand of mana stealing picked up by that mountain king meanwhile farseer gonna be was able to use that lightning shield strategy to clear out that creep camp there is that voodoo lounge that i was expecting we are going to see some heals there in just a moment. And what is that? Gauntlets of Ogre Strength plus 3 as the Farseer has, well, a bonus 150 pit, hit points already. Very, very helpful. Are we going to perhaps see some healing salves as well as that Farseer did absorb quite a bit of damage? Footman trying to engage here. Those Spirit Wolves still deal large amounts of damage. you got to be careful there. Meanwhile, the Farseer able to back away and get a little bit of distance once more as the Footman down to 317 hit points. But wants to just disrupt the healing on that Farseer. Mountain King making its rounds back as well. We are going to see some Militia join in on the fight. Is the Mountain King... No, Mountain King went for Bash instead of Thunderclap here. Interesting choice as the Farseer are going to come in from behind and perhaps get in some damage. There's that Chain Lightning for the experience deal. Stormbolt, however, going to surround that Farseer here in just a moment. Get... Oh, nope. Does not get the surround. A little bit of a, of a misstep there. There's a follow-up, a Bash, I thought. But no, the Farseer able to use that... Um, to, to use the scroll of town portal in order to get away mountain king that attack um, it looked like it was going to be a bash there but the, the, how his swing work doesn't actually indicate whether or not it is a bash we are looking at an arcane vault being built very very quickly perhaps to try and get in some extra healing this one peasant could get could have gotten taken down we're looking at more footmen getting taken out as well as those kobolds are just getting in all of that extra damage there to try and finish off wow that footman down to 14 hit points somehow still staying alive as we see another follow-up bash there more repairs or faster building here one chain lightning or shockwave could have done terrible damage to the human army and those workers but instead able to keep alive here all right it looks like that wand of mana stealing was sold um in order to pick up some additional gold perhaps trying to get up a clarity potion as well more healing underway an arcane tower will be upgraded here in just a second as both sides retreat back into their corner Tome of Intelligence, well, being left behind 
as all players do. Farseer making its way down as well. Mountain King going to go ahead and clear up some of um, some of the action here as we are looking at level 3 on that Mountain King. Kobold going to get taken down as the level 3 Mountain King. We don't see a tech to tier 2 as of yet, but the Farseer going to be making its way over. All right, are we going to see a Stormbolt go down here? There goes a Stormbolt onto the Farseer. Farseer taking quite a bit of damage, but those additional continents of Ogre Strength plus 3 making a very big difference in the overall hit points of that Farseer. Is that Farseer now down to 379? Imagine if this Farseer was down to um, under about 200 hit points. All of a sudden, it would be in a much more dangerous spot peasants well are they even gonna bother to try and fight back here double spirit wolves um, one footman trying to fight back against these two spirit wolves not gonna turn out well as those spirit wolves do have critical strike uh, meanwhile mountain king is gonna get off another storm bolt there doesn't have enough mana as the well farseer able to use that healing salve in order to get away storm bolt now going after a grunt here mountain king gonna get in front finish off that one grunt there Getting in a little bit more experience as the tech to tier 2 still has not yet been started. Farseer are going to make its way over. There is one guard tower here. One arcane tower going to start feeding back that damage. Dealing bonus damage to those units as the peasant going to try and run to the back here. Make sure to make it difficult for him to get attacked. These spirit wolves could get some easy big damage with those critical strikes. Chain lightning bouncing around, finishing off three or finishing off a couple of units there as the Farseer. Level one um, chain lightning getting in that damage and perhaps going to finish off another footman as well. There it goes. Farseer getting a big advantage there as we are looking at that Torrent Chieftain about to join in on the fight as well. Farseer sitting at level three, made it just in time for the second half. Yep, nice to have you, Metaphysics. Farseer now making its way back over as well as damage going to get added in. Footman going to try and put pressure onto those Spirit Wolves as they are backing up. Meanwhile, Staff of Teleportation going to, well, teleport him away. Mountain King did not get the Storm Bolt off in time. Even if it did, I believe the traveling time would have been just too much. And, well, the Farseer would have been able to dodge that Storm Bolt while wasting 75 mana from that Mountain King. Mountain King now heading off to the north here. Continent of Ogre Strength plus three coupled with Claws of Attack plus nine. We are looking at two bases, obviously from 15 Sway. Meanwhile, and, and taking the tier two. Meanwhile, Lin already at tier two, setting up his own expansion, but it looks like it's gonna be pressured here in just a moment. Mountain King coming in from the north here. Are we going to perhaps see a storm both? No, we are not. Raiders, all of these other units are going to be trying to engage footmen. Perhaps going to get some damage onto some of those peons as they are trying to do a bit of mining. This peon just running around and causing a little bit of problems and traffic. But as, well, there goes the Mountain King. Going to go ahead and, uh, well, storm bolt down that one shaman as the peons are now being transferred back over. Double forest troll berserkers. And, well, we're finding Sui, 15 Sway, finding a way to using, uh, to use all that bonus bit of gold as he is still sitting in no upkeep right now 41 supply compared to 54 as the engagement is going through all right more damage coming back across we should be looking at a stomp there you go stunning a good six sub or ten supply worth of army right there as the units are now trying to back away no ensnare yet as the shamans are getting taken down as well are we going to see an ensnare raider trying to perhaps catch back up there's the ensnare and that's going to be one dead forest troll berserker all right, yeah, 15 Sway having a lot of mercenaries because of all of that bonus gold. Mountain King now gets up to level 5 here, or level 4. It gets in a bash um, and trying to finish off the Shaman. Shaman looks like it will end up getting taken down. One or two more shots should finish it off. There it goes, Mountain King. Well, a very dangerous hero right now as we're looking at the Mountain King just wander around and still preventing any real mining at this natural or at the natural expansion. And Snare now going down here. Are we going to see a Squirrel of Town Portal? Mountain King has no way out. Finally uses that Squirrel of Town Portal to get away as Riflemen are getting added. All right. Riflemen being trained up here. We are going to Castle. Blood Mage is getting added in as that second hero. And this is the opportunity where Sway, well, Sway having an additional peasant on the gold mine, really not necessary. Six um, peasants on a gold mine do not mine faster than five unless you place your gold mine too far away or your town hall too far away from the gold mine. Mountain King diving straight on in, going to finish off this creep camp pretty quickly as the riflemen finish off the Sasquatch. 
looks like no AM play on Terranus Stand is the new meta. Yeah, it, it, it does seem like that is the case. The map seems to be smaller. And because of that, perhaps mass teleport not as an important of an ability. Um, and that may be the reason why you see well Archmage so much on Twisted Meadows, where mass teleport in the late game is absolutely important to really make that map feel much smaller and to be able to constantly get in position. Mountain King does have Siphon Mana, Stormbolt onto the Raider. Damage right there. Mountain King followed up with a Thunderclap. Level 2 Thunderclap slowing things. Siphon Mana away from the Torrent Chiefs and Torrent Chiefs and losing quite a bit of mana right there. Or actually not that much mana. Losing a little bit of mana right there as the Blood Mage only at level 1. Perhaps the Blood Mage was able to get some mana without, uh, without using up too much of his own. Uh, 15 Sway versus Lin. It's up in the title right there. Um, I believe this is 15 Sway versus Lin. Unless the name actually does say Fortitude, which it is, which would be my apology. Let me double check that for a second. It. Uh, no, it's 15 Sway. For, yeah, it's 15 Sway versus Lin. All right. Blood Mage making its rounds once more. Torrent Chieftain at level 4, and the Farseer is at level 3. Torrent Chieftain with that level 2 stomp is going to be absolutely critical if that Torrent Chieftain can get into the right spot. Meanwhile, Mountain King or Blood Mage should have actually been siphoning mana from that Renegade Wizard, try to get more mana on that Blood Mage into that next fight. Meanwhile, we are looking at the Spirit Wolves diving on in here. Torrent Chieftain going to finish off this Arcane Vault. Chain Lightning bouncing around a little bit of bonus damage. Lightning Shield finishing off some more Peasants as well as we now see a Tactical Retreat. Sorceress and Riflemen all show up to the party. Double Force Troll Shadow Priest not really that helpful now that we also have a couple of actual priests in there as well dealing a large bit of damage all right torrent chieftain could get in a big stomp there goes a storm bolt are we gonna see a siphon mana no we are not scroll of speed being used there and are we gonna see the siphon mana no we don't instead a stomp right there a blood mage trying to be healed potion of lesser and vulnerability siphon mana now breaking through as you see a major thunderclap coming down all right torrent chieftain level two now on that blood mage we could see some more siphon mana there goes a little bit more damage onto that torrent chieftain Torn Chieftain in trouble. There's a stomp. Is the Mountain King going to be able to come out alive? No, it does not. Chain Lightning finishing everything off while the Torrent Chieftain escapes at 14 hit points. Beautiful, beautiful save right there um, as units are now backing away once more. All right, more and more uh, Banish trying to save some of those um, Riflemen, but Banish does not last forever, and eventually that damage is going to start to add back up. Blood Mage is a great support hero, but a very poor a primary hero trying to lead this army as Lin has a 1,000 gold in the bank and is able to, well, um, spend his gold a little bit more wisely than his opponent. However, it looks like this raider may get taken down. Blood Mage needs to get one or two more shots over. There was a purge and breaks free of that slow. All right, Rifleman going to try and fight once more. Paladin back out onto the field. More Siphon Mana. We're looking at the Torrent Chieftain diving back in. Are we going to see damage getting added in onto that Torrent Chieftain? There goes a Stomp. Siphon Mana breaking free once more again as the Torrent Chieftain gets in a little bit too close, losing all of that precious mana. No Holy Light to save that Rifleman there as the units are just still diving around every which way. More Siphon Mana back again. Mountain King still getting resurrected, and that's going to take quite some time as the Torrent Chieftain, well, is it going to perhaps just get a Lightning shield off more siphon mana once more all right all of your mana is mine that's what the blood mage is trying to say throughout this matchup as the paladin is can still continually trying to heal up more units uh, well no easy way to get damage there rifleman slowly being digested it looks like it is going to end up being able to finish that one unit there blood mage going after a couple of additional units that could be a problem there goes a, a banish right there are we going to see some damage onto that grunt grunt down to 36 hit points rifleman can just turn around finish it off and there it goes another unit paladin wants to try and save up that rifleman but the rifleman going to get attacked in the back as well torrent chieftain down to 134 hit points and it really feels like lin is trying to use every bit of health out of all of his units as that torrent chieftain just constantly low on hit points still staying alive all right coming back through yeah um 
yeah, Uni Uni Crone. This is uh, this is one of the best art real time strategy games ever, if not the best. I it, it's a toss up for me between Brood War and Warcraft Three. Um, I never really, um, perhaps because I played more Warcraft Three, I enjoy Warcraft Three more. Uh, Brood War, and um, I think it just gave me too much carpal tunnel with all of the micro trying to keep track of um, and all of that n necessary macro just constantly spamming back across over here spirit wolves are causing problems inside the main base of 15 sway meanwhile in comes the army here ensnaring couple of units 49 supply compared to 51 mountain king now back out onto the field Stormbolt now onto the torrent chieftain siphon mana are we going to see a follow-up thunderclap no we are not as the mountain king is still relatively low on mana spellbreaker starting to being added in um into the overall um human army as well as the mountain king going to be making its way over all right mountain king moving into position here once more blood mage going to come back across are we going to perhaps see some thunderclaps here yes using that thunderclap um even but the mountain or the blood mage is giving plenty of mana to that mountain king here as we see a healing ward being placed down as well all right, keeping the mana fresh on those priests. Much, much more important. Tome of Intelligence plus two. Why not leave it behind? It's not like that Mountain King wants to throw off more Storm Bolts. And I'm being facetious. All right, the Mountain King going to be able to finish off the remaining units here. Hopefully that Tome of Intelligence... The two Tome of Intelligence plus twos. All right, making some space for some potions of mana. No reading allowed. Yeah, apparently no reading is allowed. But come on, two Tome of Intelligence plus twos. He has to have seen it after trying to build those buildings. He has to realize that that is incredibly important and he doesn't go after them. Okay, if that Mountain King doesn't have enough mana for a Stormbolt, uh, we are absolutely going to know why. Shadow Wolves are still down across over here. Spellbreakers will be able to finish them off alongside that um, Flying Machine, which gives true, uh, true Sight. All right, coming back the other way. Yes, Tome of Intelligence plus two, Tome of Intelligence plus two. Um, mana on a Mountain King, apparently not what it was used for. St what? Squirrel of Town Portal heading back across over here as they're going to try to raid in the castle. In comes a bit of damage. Flying Machines. Raiders getting in damage onto the castle. Castle could end up getting taken down right here. And this was an unexpected, unexpected um, turn of events. Losing the main castle, even though there's still five minutes of mining left. All right, able to just run on in and cause a lot of problems. Spirit Wolves coming back across over here. And, well, Mountain King now chasing after that raider there. All right, 65 supply compared to 53. Lin has the larger army. He has more economy. But, um, well, actually, I take it back. He does not have more economy as both players are sitting on two bases. Is the Torrent Chieftain, is he going to pick up the Tome of Intelligence plus two that is sitting right there? Or is that not really there and is currently bugged? Nope. Farseer says thank you for that Tome of Intelligence plus two. Is it going to get the other Tome of Intelligence plus two off to the north? That is an, a, a big question. We could be looking at a Stormbolt coming across here. Are we going to see a Thunderclap? Yes, we are. Trying to finish off some of those units. Siphon mana away. There goes another Grunt as well as the Torrent Chieftain is able to escape. All right. There is a Tome of Intelligence plus two. Is he going to pick it up now? Um, come on. It's, it's right there next to your tower. All right. Watchtower down to 322 hit points. Tome of Intelligence actually going to the Blood Mage instead for a little bit of bonus damage. Meanwhile, back down to the south here, Troll Witch Doctor is going to be placing wards all over the place. Could have placed a ward right here as well to prevent any sort of real, um, real fighting. Stasis Trap is down. And, well, this is going to give the Witch Doctor, um, well, the Witch Doctor the opportunity to attack that Sorceress for a little while longer. As that Stasis Trap does stun for quite a bit of time, Sorceress now finally backing away there. Torin Chieftain Farseer making their ways back down. 76 supply over 80. Where is the un orc army? And there it is. It is bloodlusted Windriders. 76 over 80 supply. I was wondering what type of army um, is at this much supply because you just didn't see it from the Farseer and the Torin Chieftain yet. Instead, it is bloodlusted Windriders, and that is going to completely catch his opponent off guard, most likely, as the scout and guard tower is going to try to get added in. All right, however, there is one flying machine enough to 
cause a little bit of problems. Uh, the bloodlusted uh, uh, Windrider is now backing away. Spellbreaker is perhaps stealing a little bit of that bloodlust as well as the units are backing away once more. Windriders do give a lot of experience. They are considered four supply units as a shaman may end up getting taken down here. All right. The army is invested in the bloodlusted Windriders. Meanwhile, back down to the south, Farseer and Torrent Chieftain both sitting at level four or level five, level four, going up against five, three, and an almost level three paladin. We should be getting up more peasants here. More spirit wolves could get added in. Unable to do very much. He is getting all of that arcane feedback. Arcane tower going to end up falling here. Raiders are joining in. Torin Chieftain going to finish off these guard towers as it looks like it is going to be a, tra a trading of the bases. All right, uh, Paladin now sitting at level three. Level two, Holy Light is going to be important. Siphon mana into that Mountain King. There's a Thunderclap slowing everything down a little bit as Peon after Peon is going to end up being lost. Back across over here, Raiders going after the Town Hall. Are we perhaps going to see another trading of bases as it's going to be one base versus one base. Wind Riders, Kodo Beast, and Shaman um, of Lin really not... Um, really not doing anything so far. Lin is sitting on a 79 supply army, but it just does not look like it at this point. Um, somehow 15 Sway, who is down by over 30 supply, is still able to put a lot of pressure just because of the unit choices. The flying machines uh, deal a lot of damage to those Wind Riders. Wind Riders don't have that many hit points, only 570. And for a 4 supply unit, um, well, those get taken down very, very quickly. Those flying machines with piercing damage and flak cannons will spread apart a lot of damage very fast. All right, let's go ahead and go for that engagement. Torn Chieftain, there is a stomp the entire front line. Chain Lightning following up right behind. There is the Bloodlust, and is this going to be enough? And, well, yep, 15 Sway sees the writing on the wall. And once that was there, and it was enough. 15 Sway never realizing how large um, Lin's army actually was. He never got a full, a full dose of it until the very end. And that's, I believe, how he surprised his opponent. Um, 15 Sway just constantly thought, okay, his army is pretty small. Uh, he's probably at the same supply as I am. He has two heroes, two raiders, and two shaman. And, uh, you know, and that's what was constantly attacking him and pressuring him. So, well, what did 15 Sway do? He also chose to stay in no upkeep. Unbeknownst to him, though, Lin was actually saving up a large amount of gold, and his resource management and his army management was what ultimately gave him the edge in the end. He was able to hide a, a 70 supply army difference inside his base and then reveal it when he needed it most. If he had slowly rallied those units into his army, 15 Sway would have realized, you know what, um, I'm slightly behind in terms of army size. I need to make different decisions in order to come out ahead. And really, I think it was a, a mental game right there, experience by Lin knowing what to do um, and managing his overall army supply compared to 15 Sway, who I believe is now seven or 17 or 18, his inexperience, not realizing that trick, not realizing, hey, how much gold does my opponent have and where is that gold actually going? Thanks for watching and thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed it.